Okay, testing, testing, one, two, testing, one, two. What's up, guys? For everybody who missed the live stream Monday, I'd like to apologize. Had some uh, technical difficulties, but back on the live blog right now. This is going to be the first week of the reconditioning strength training, getting ready for the U.S. Nationals and state championships this year. Um, for everybody who was wondering, Fundamental Fridays has not taken a permanent hiatus. It's just that Fundamental Fridays is a lot of work. <laughs> so, uh, with Fundamental Fridays, basically what's going on is it'll return either May or June. So, for everybody who was asking when is Fundamental Fridays, when is Fundamental Fridays, Fundamental Fridays will be back either May or June. I'll keep you posted. And I will have the blog fully functional for those who want to leave their comments in their Fundamental Fridays videos. Remember, Fundamental Fridays is not just limited to Taekwondo. Fundamental Fridays can be any uh, martial art, Kung Fu, uh, kickboxing, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, Taekwondo, boxing, uh, Rumageka wrestling, just you know, whatever. Uh, fundamentals, uh, mechanics, uh, technical moves that you want to demonstrate or explain or like to like explain. Uh, Fundamental Friday is when we do it. Um, I'm going to be having some new partners, new guests uh, this year. After the success of Fundamental Fridays uh, that we had uh, going into 2016 or 2017, it went great. Uh, as you know, I bronze and U.S. Nationals and Ultra Division 2017 up in Detroit. Uh, I'm hoping to compete in both Senior and Ultra this year at the U.S. Nationals. I will be competing in both Senior and Ultra depending on the state championship this year qualifying for the U.S. Nationals. Um, it's been a journey. Uh, it's been one of those situations where you learn a lot about how the United States amateur athletics work, particularly USA Taekwondo, which I am a member of, and I participate in their U.S. Nationals, because in the United States, uh, we have the United States Olympic Committee, and we also have United States Taekwondo, or USA uh, Taekwondo, or USA TKD, which was rebranded here at U.S. Open. Uh, why didn't I participate in U.S. Open this year? life um i uh this year in january i had a mountain of things i had to get done i also had to reset for this year because tokyo may seem like a lifetime away but people have to remember the pan am games is in the united states this year and and it's in spokane washington there also is going to be a pan am open so with the Pan Am Games here in the United States, and they've already picked a team, we'll see how well they work. But the Pan Am Open is in the United States of Spokane, so I'm looking at participating in the Pan Am Open, that's the Pan American Open uh, in Spokane, Washington, which is later on in the week uh, from the Pan Am t uh, Championships. Um, as you might have heard or read, uh, whether you follow World Taekwondo or particularly uh, USAT now finally seeming to come around to recognize that the World Taekwondo Federation is the authority and is your who sets the standards for Olympic Taekwondo. Um, there's a point system up now, so international travel and winning international events is a uh, must now. The good news about this year is the good news about this year is uh, the Pan Am Games are going to be United States and the Pan Am Open are going to be United States. Usually I have to go down to Mexico or somewhere in the Caribbean or something like that. But this year we looked up and the Pan Am Games are here in the United States, which is awesome. Um, the main thing about that that I want to stress is how awesome that is. The United States uh, as a Taekwondo uh, competitive country is in a spot where you have a lot of opportunities to train and to you know 
both physical training, both technical training, both nutrition, nutrition, you're in a very unique situation in the United States. The thing about that is that it's still not free or, or cheap. But the good news of being a Taekwondo player in the United States is that you do get opportunities to travel and train and go to seminars and do things that are a little harder in some of our you know, neighboring countries, even you know Canada and Mexico. It takes some doing sometimes to, you know, be able to have seminars and training. So I'll be attending some seminars this year. I'll be teaching some seminars this year and uh, be speaking at some seminars this year. So we're going to see how this, the rest of this Taekwondo season goes. Um, Taekwondo season in the United States starts in January. Uh, we open up the year in the United States with the U.S. Open. And the U.S. Open is a very, very big event. And I apologize right now for uh, the darkness of the video. It's just that, you know, uh, I'm kind of driving and I'm, I'm on my way to the gym right now. So it's kind of hard to have proper lighting because in Alabama, you really can't ride with your lights on in the car. So the spirit hit me to give you an update. So I'm going to give you an update now what's going on. Um, basically... As I said, the Taekwondo season here, if there's such a thing, starts in January with the U.S. Open. U.S. Open is slowly but surely recognizing the fact that, you know, international athletes come to compete at the U.S. Open. Um, U.S. Open this year had a relative who's who over all world weight classes and over all Olympic weight classes divisions competing this year. Now, for those who are kind of foggy on what I mean when I say Olympic weight divisions and world-class weight divisions, world-class weight divisions are different from Olympic divisions. Olympic divisions have four basic weight groups, four for women, four for men, while the world uh, class or world championship weight divisions have, in some cases, almost 10 to 16 a piece uh, eight to nine males eight to nine female weight divisions so when you see a plus 80 or plus 87 plus 80 is heavyweight for the olympics anything over 80 kilograms is heavyweight for world class anything over 87 kilograms is heavyweight there's no super heavyweight class as it stands right now i compete in the heavyweight division the heavyweight division is one that is interesting in the sense that a lot of people now think that well, if I don't make weight, I just jump in the heavyweight division, and they don't understand that's not how it works. You know, if you miss, you know, your weight, you know, by three pounds, five pounds, whatever, jumping in the heavyweight division is not the move. But you have to remember, in the states, you know, we're we're just now getting to the point where this is going to be one of those years where I'm watching very closely just to see if, and I'm sorry to stress, if some of the actual changes that the World Talk Window uh, have put out there in reference to qualifications, training, certifications, are going to finally be strongly adhered to here in the States, um, particularly with weight divisions. If you don't make weight, you don't just jump into the heavyweight division or one heavyweight division thinking that's okay. It's not. They have a rule saying you have to wait a year. Well, I'm looking to see how well that jives because I think about looking at the top 25 to 50 heavyweight classes. And I can remember just last year, there was barely, you know, 25 of us. I look up now and all of a sudden there's almost 50, if not, I think it's 53, 54 world class division. And the same thing with the Olympic division. Once again, barely 30. Now there's almost 40 guys claiming, you know, they're in the heavyweight division, you know, and a lot of them came from the junior rankings. One good thing I like that I can say I can appreciate now is the junior ranking as far as the Youth Olympic Games. Youth Olympic Games is for those who want to do their homework, uh, actually backed by the International Olympic Committee. It's actually an International Olympic Committee event. It's the official Youth Olympic Games. Uh, you know, you have some uh, organizations that claim to have Youth Olympics this and Junior Olympics that. The Youth Olympic Games are the official Youth Olympic Games for the National Olympic Committee. Uh, they're going to be in Buenos Aires this year. 
uh, if you want to do your homework, you know, go to uh, inter in in Olymp International Olympic Committee and uh, look up Youth Olympic Games, get all the information at their website. That's uh, olympics.org. And I find it interesting that a, a sport a event like the Youth Olympic Games has gone on several times and this is one of the first years I think I've ever heard anyone at USA Taekwondo say anything about it. I mean, they've sent an athlete or two, but when you stop and think about this year, they actually had trials for teams, who, for people who were going to participate and be sent representing the United States to the Youth Olympic Games. That was you know, kind of different because usually, you know, it's just, it's, it seems like a random group of people that were picked that get something to go. And you kind of wonder, okay, well, well, how did they get picked? What was the, you know, process? Was there a trial? Blah, 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 blah. Um, speaking of, you know, U.S. Open and uh, U.S. Olympic trials, U.S. team trials, uh, et cetera, uh, I was interested in, in how the U.S. Open was covered this year. Uh, they did a joint partnership deal with the Olympic Channel that broadcast the U.S. Open. I'm wanting to know if anyone knows uh, where is going to be the actual video you can go back and watch to see the actual U.S. Open. You know, they streamed it live a couple of days it was going on, but no one yet has posted the actual video of the U.S. Open. You see the results, and with the U.S. team trials, it's sort of the same thing. Uh, it was streamed in partnership with, but as far as being able to, like you used to at one point, go back and look at it, that's kind of one off. I'm trying to figure out why they did it that way, because at the end of the day, you know, you actually want, if you're pushing these athletes, claiming that they're the best United States has to offer, you know, people want to see, okay, who did they fight? You know, who did they go up against? And so the highlight reels that they put up has been kind of spotty, but it's been highlights from athletes. I hadn't really, and I'm waiting to get the link myself to see the official 2018 U.S. Open, highlights official 2018 U.S. Open, you know, event. Both at both Pumse and uh, Kuru, the sport. So... Yeah, that's one of those things that you look at and you, you have to go, okay, will it get better from this point on? Um, can it get better from this point on? Who knows? Um, only thing I can say is that listening in at a quarterly board meeting that I got a chance to uh, listen into here a week or two ago, it sounds like they're slowly embracing the fact that Modern sport, combat taekwondo, this is the route you have to go. I'm still looking forward to seeing if they actually follow through with that. Uh, as you know, we got Mr. Green and Mr. Brown, who were very successful coaches over in Great Britain. Uh, those were Lauren and Jaden and a few more of the top uh, British athletes, coaches that were over there. So it's going to be interesting to see how much of an impact they have here in the States with not just projections for 2024 um, Paris and 2028 Los Angeles, but what impact will they have 2020 Tokyo, uh, if any, Pan Am Games. Um, I've got a chance to watch some of their seminars and they both have a lot of experience I've seen and, and teach a lot of strong fundamentals with the modern combat style of sport, Olympic Taekwondo, which is cool. That's something I can say when I look at certain training videos of other coaches, not to, not, not to name anybody here in the United States, that I find interesting, that they fought so hard not to train the new rules, although several of them flew to Korea and received the training. I, I find that it's baffling to me that you would go to Korea get the coaching certification, get the referee certification, but then when you get back to the States at your school, don't teach the new rules. You know, I go back to the U.S. Uh, Nationals last year in Detroit. A lot of guys lost by point deduction because they didn't know the new rules. They didn't fight by the new rules. 
they start using rules that were either made up or from you know 10, 15 years ago. And what a lot of people don't understand, especially about sport taekwondo, is that sport taekwondo evolves. Sport taekwondo um, doesn't stay stagnant like people think. It's just like when you look at what's going on with um, modern or like to return the Olympic style sport karate now. The Olympic style sport karate now uh, very much so has its own has turn it off. <laughs> and if you're seeing if you didn't see this live, you're seeing this is this is the live stream right now. So this is unedited. I might I might edit it later. I might just leave it like this. It depends on how I feel. Um, when you look at uh, the modern sport karate, modern sport karate itself, yeah, modern sport karate has its rules and has um, its standards, you know, for, you know, kicks, grabs, points. Well, Taekwondo has the same thing, you know, new rules for the clinch, new rules for, you know, cut kidding, new rules for, you know, uh, video, instant video replay, um, challenging a points. I mean, it's all kinds of rules and standards that they change and it's good to see that at least the, the new coaches uh, that, that, that came over from uh, Great Britain are teaching those. That was good to see. The next thing I'd like to hear is how I'm going to be doing my blog, 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 you know, streaming from here on out. I'm going to try my best to record and get out as many training sessions as I can. Uh, I'm not going to use any of the 4K cameras or anything like that. It's going to be phone like this. I got a couple of cameras that one of them is a 4K camera, but that stands right now. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to use those, especially out in the field, because I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see dragging around a $5,000 camera. Now, I have a slightly cheaper one that does 4K that I'm, you know, thinking about getting some more equipment for and setting up and, you know, taking some footage, but that's how that's going to work. Tournaments. Um, as many as I can. I'm looking to do a lot more international, true international this year. Uh, that's going to be a TBA until I, you know, get officially registered and passport, uh, not passport, but uh, visas and other things done. Uh, but that's going to be something that I'm going to do a lot of. For those vlogs, I'm going to be doing a lot of, you know, this is wherever I am and, you know, show you some of the cuisines and the places I go, maybe get chances to video some training. Those videos are going to be, for the most part, some of them chopped. I doubt very seriously I get a chance to stream a lot of those live, depending on where I am, because I'm going to be honest, the shit's not cheap. Um, it's a cost factor to stream uh, video overseas. Um, it's just, it's, it's really, it's, it's not cheap at all anywhere. Um, so that's gonna be a leading factor into why a lot of my vlogs are going to be post-production chops, maybe uh, montages put in, but on the live stream such as this one, not so much. Um, it is going to be a very interesting rest of the Taekwondo season this year with the Pan Am Open, that's in Spokane, the U.S. Nationals, and I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it under wraps right now. Uh, those that are members of USA Taekwondo who can go to the different weight classes and see will know, but those that don't and, and uh, are familiar with that, I'm keeping on the wraps right now, the state championships that I'm going to be a part of, except for one. Everyone knows the Georgia state championships for me is a given. I'm going to show up to that, even if I'm the only one that shows up. The Georgia state championships, um, that for USAT, for me anyway, is a homecoming of sort. Because those that didn't know, I trained extensively for almost 10 years, getting back into the Taekwondo, sport Taekwondo, sport Taekwondo, in the state of Georgia. My home school of the modern area, my modern era, I'm sorry, it's an area. Modern era is in uh, Swanee, Georgia. 
Um, I enjoy going home and seeing some of my friends and family I have up in Georgia, seeing some of the, my students that I formerly trained, some of them, the masters I trained with, uh, some of the instructors I trained with and trained under. Um, it's going to be, Georgia is my homecoming. The Georgia State Championships are going to be my homecoming. Uh, any of the others, I'm keeping on the wraps because we do have, we do have the new rule now. Uh, the days of me going, say, to Texas and becoming the champ, then go North Carolina the champ, those days they limit because they say you can only hold one state championship, gold medal. Now, the gotcha with that is you can hold one state championship gold medal. That doesn't mean you can't bronze or silver until they change that. So, I uh, want to give a shout out to Texas. Texas, once again, is a uh, nice trip for me. I lived out in uh, Dallas and Houston uh, for a little while. So, when I go, especially to Dallas, um, it is good to be back up in that area, especially when you got in the burbs, you know, Plano, Juno, McKinson. Now, Irvin, Arlington, and, and uh, Fort Worth, that's a whole other, whole other conversation. But, you know, it's good to be back in, to be back in the area when I go, especially, you know, for tournaments and whatnot. Uh, will I be at the Texas State Championships? We'll see. Um, if I do get out there, uh, it could be as an athlete or it could be as just a spectator. It just really depends on um, how I feel that weekend. You say, what do you mean how, how you feel that weekend? Well, because you have to remember something. None of these tournaments are free. That's the other part about it. All the state championships are, you know, not free. There is a fee attached to it. And you have to remember that if you have enough money to go to multiple state championships, you're paying multiple entry fees. The good news is I'm glad the standard uh, electronic sparring uh, gear is kind of standardized this year where you don't have to worry about having Gen 1 or Gen 2 or three-piece Gen 2. It's a standardized, standardized foot gear, especially for senior sparring, which is excellent. Now, for the kids, the, little, the, the cadets, the little tigers, the, the juniors, that may vary, especially if they, whether they're using electronic Higu scoring or not. But for seniors and ultras, good to go. Um, I want to take an opportunity to thank uh, some of my friends in South Carolina. Um, I was having a equipment malfunction with some electronic footwear, and I was able to uh, get some with some help from some friends of mine out of the great state of South Carolina. So I'm gonna say thank you again. Um, you guys helping me out in Detroit was outstanding. I appreciate it. Uh, I am going to be able to make a tournament out that way, which one I'm not saying. Those that know are familiar with it. Those that are that want to know, I'm gonna keep you guessing. Um, it's awesome to still be able to compete and win at this level. Uh, I amaze myself a lot of times realizing that when I compete at these different um, tournaments and I win gold, silver, bronze at these tournaments, it always amazes me, you know, that I'm able to still do that. You know, I'm up in age now. But one thing with martial arts, no one ever talks about, but it's a reality I'm slowly seeing more and more now. Youth is not an advantage in martial arts, especially in sport taekwondo. Um, experience I've, I've seen with a lot of the athletes from last year who were on the uh, United States uh, taekwondo team, that they kept from like experience, experience, experience. Well, experience is part of it, but you take the experience of winning over 20 years compared to you won maybe five, six years juniors or one year junior, it's not the same. You know, if you have experience going to a tournament, that's great, but if you have experience winning at that tournament, you need to take that and realize that you need to get better. Don't just say, I went to the tournament and showed up. You know, one thing I hope to see a little less of this year is. USA teams just showing up, 
You know, it'd be nice to win gold medals. And not just from the usual suspects. And I point out the fact that Steven Lopez is almost 40. And he's still one of the few United States athletes that's on the U.S. Uh, national team that's winning gold medals. Jackie Galloway, who, you know, technically came from the Mexican Olympic team, uh, she took silver in this year's Grand Slam, which is interesting considering that she um, had to go make the Mexican team and come back and get picked up on the U.S. team for, you know, she was able to get a chance to represent the United States on the U.S. team. That's kind of crazy. You know, the only person right now winning gold medals for the United States in Taekwondo on the U.S. national team is the 40-year-old. <laughs> Think about that for a second, people. So, I really and truly hope that this Taekwondo season goes very well. Um, I'm going to win gold medals. Uh, I'm not just going to show up. I'm training like tonight at the gym. Uh, tonight is going to be a cardio slash uh, machine day. Uh, for those of you who know how I do my, my schedule, I'm switching the schedule up a little bit. On my cardio days, I'm going to do a little bit of leg work, uh, leg tuning. Uh, even though I am well over plus 80, I have a weight goal this year that I want to try to hit and maintain. Uh, that's a work in progress, so I'm just going to see how well I do throughout this year, especially with nutrition. One thing that I, I um, have to stress and have to realize, and that's for whether you're a young Taekwondo athlete or old Taekwondo athlete, is nutrition. Um, nutrition is... I mean, it, it's it's the most important thing, you know, even above, I say, your training, because without proper nutrition, you're not going to be able to function. And you have to have proper nutrition. You have to be able to eat well, and eat well through the year, not just diet. Now, one thing um, I want to understand, I'm not saying diet. I'm not saying the, the crash course diets, any of that garbage. I'm saying just general nutrition, day-to-day, -day, everything you eat, drink, that type of nutrition. Now, I'm not talking about the crazy diet. I'm not talking about off-season dieting, off-season diet. I'm talking about just in general, your everyday what you eat to you know sustain yourself. Um, nutrition is very powerful. Hydration is very powerful. Um, you can't take for granted the importance of hydration because hydration is the difference between getting kicked and you know having a brain aneurysm and die or getting gas, getting in the chest, and your heart stops. Don't laugh for all of my Floridians who know what I'm talking about, who remember the incidents. Uh, this past year, you know, the, the individuals who died, you know, for just that, they, dehy they, they, they dehydrate themselves, and dehydrate themselves, and purge, and purge, and purge, and they got into the ring, a guy knocked the guy on the guy on the mat, and it didn't go well for you know, you have to properly hydrate, you have to properly do nutrition, you have to get your rest, and you have to remember something. <clears throat> when you're training, how you train just is important, just as important as what you are training. What do you mean by that? Well, first thing is you have to remember something. When you train, okay, I'm going to use the new rules as an example for sport combat attack window for the Olympics. If you're not familiar with the new rule set, if you're not familiar with how you can get a penalty for not engaging, how you can get a penalty for you know pushing, how you can get not get a, how you can get a penalty for you know evasion. If you don't know that, you can be beating someone by ten points, and in less than a minute be losing by twenty. Don't laugh. Go to. Uh, World Championships and the World Grand Prix and look at some of the U.S. athletes and what happened, how there are guys that had 10-point leads that got that diminished just like that. Look at some of the um, last year's 2017 uh, U.S. Nationals. Cats that were losing not because necessarily their combat wasn't there, was because they didn't know the rules and they were, you know, they were basically throwing points to their opponents. 
it's very important that you learn the rules of what you're doing. You know, raw, I can fight is not good enough. It's not good enough and it's not gonna it's not gonna get you anywhere. You know, having the patience to realize that if you've never trained in a certain style, you have to be patient with yourself and get the right people around you and the right people on your team that have the knowledge and information to get you ready for that next level. One thing I hope to see also, and I know I've got a lot of things I hope to see because I have a lot of expectations for you know this year. Um, when you go to the next level, when I say next level, U.S. Open next level, Pan Am Games next level, U.S. Nationals technically next level, on top of World Grand Prix, World Grand Slam, World Grand Championships, um, World Championships, uh, Youth Olympic Games, uh, the university that we just had. We had the top college athletes in the world in all sports. Taekwondo, if you didn't know about that, go look at uh, university that held in um, Taiwan, uh, Taiwan this year. Uh, have some youth athletes go to that and compete. Um, that next level is that, just that next level. You know, you're competing with people from around the world, literally, who want to win just like you want to win. Um, you have to realize that when you're going against the best in the world, you're claiming to be the best somewhere. You can't just be the best that showed up that day. Um, taekwondo, sport taekwondo, is a growing and evolving sport. And it's one that's going to be in the Olympics 20, 20, 2024, 20, 2020, 20, and beyond. This myth that Taekwondo is on a on a some type of threat from crime. Let me explain something to you guys. You need to know. Listen to me carefully. For those that didn't know, here's some homework for you to do in addition to the other homework I gave you. Realize that sport karate 2020 is the first year that karate has ever been in the Olympic Games. Here's the interesting about that. 2020 could be the last Olympics that karate is a, a sport Olympic Games. Keep that in mind. This myth that Taekwondo, that's bullshit. No, 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 that's not going to happen. Taekwondo, especially Olympic style Taekwondo, has the backing of an entire government behind it. It's their job. Ministry of Sports, Culture, and Tourism. Look them up. They have a goal to make sure that as long as there is an Olympics or a Summer Olympics, Taekwondo